In this video, I'm gonna show you why you should always ignore peak power and use RMS power when you're picking out and setting up your amplifier. In order to do that, we have to explain what RMS actually is. RMS stands for root mean squared. In order to fully understand that, we're gonna to need to use an oscilloscope. Now, an oscilloscope is really handy for setting your amplifier gains, and if you'll stick around, I'll show you how to use this one to set those gains. And when we do that, you're gonna see that the oscilloscope will display a waveform. The wave you see on the oscilloscope is what's known as a sine wave. It's a visual representation of the voltage that your speakers are gonna get over time. It's measured in volts, not watts. You have to make a conversion from volts to watts to see how much power your amplifier is gonna get. I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. Take a look at the top of the wave. The top of the wave is your peak voltage. At full volume, your amplifier will produce peak voltage and therefore peak wattage at that point. But what you've got to remember is it's only going to do that for a very brief moment in time. Check out this wave right here. This is the wave for a 40 hertz test tone, a tone we commonly use to set up amplifiers. You're only gonna get that peak voltage for a very brief moment in time. This entire waveform right here represents one cycle or one hertz. So it's gonna make that cycle right there 40 times in a second. So you're only gonna get that peak voltage right there at just one little minute instant, less than the blink of an eye. And as that wave repeats over time, you're gonna get that peak voltage 40 times in one second. But it's kind of stupid to focus on the peak voltage because the entire waveform represents voltage. And if you look right here and right here, you'll see that the waveform is gonna cross the zero line twice so two times during that cycle, it's gonna produce zero voltage. It's actually producing zero voltage twice as often as it's producing the peak voltage. So your amplifier is gonna produce no power 80 times a second. And that's just one reason why focusing on peak is so foolish. It would actually be more realistic to focus on the zero since the zero happens more often than the peak. But no one would buy an amplifier that produced zero voltage and therefore zero power. But wait, there's more. What about this part right here at the bottom? In this range over here, the amplifier is producing negative voltage. And the size of the negative peak down here is exactly the same size as the positive peak up here. They offset each other perfectly. The waveform spends as much time below zero as it does above zero. So net over this time period, if you were to average it out, you're gonna produce zero voltage which of course is absolute nonsense because amplifiers don't produce no voltage. They produce some amount of voltage and that's what drives the speaker. In fact, when you're up here at the top of this waveform, that's when the speaker is pushed all the way out. When you're down here at the bottom, that's when the speaker is pulled all the way in. And as the speaker moves back and forth, that's what makes the sound. So even though the voltage is negative over here on this side, it's producing power and it's making sound as the subwoofer moves in. And that's why peak really is kind of stupid. It doesn't really mean anything. And that's why we need the RMS. RMS stands for root mean squared. It's just a little mathematical trick that you can use to calculate an average when you've got a bunch of positive and negative numbers that would offset each other. In fact, you've probably heard of RMS power referred to as continuous power, which if you think about it, doesn't make any sense because AC power is not continuous. The way to think about it is, RMS power is equal to the same amount of power you would get if you had continuous DC power. So here's the formula for calculating RMS voltage. It looks really complicated, but it's not. I'm gonna break it down for you by giving you an example. Before I do that, I need to say thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. These guys right here help me out with a monthly contribution to the channel. And I wanna give a special shout out to my newest patron, Jaden. What's up, Jaden? Thanks for joining the team. My patrons get all kind of cool perks. You can check out the link in the description to find out more. The waveform right here on the screen, at the peak we have 10 volts, and at the trough we have negative 10 volts, and right here in the middle we have zero volts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the zero volts, the 10 volts, the zero volts, and the negative 10 volts, and I'm gonna plug them into the formula and show you how it's calculated. So the first step to this formula is to just square all those numbers. So instead of adding them all together and getting yourself zero, you're gonna square the 10, square the negative 10, and that becomes 100 and 100, and when you square the zero, that's zero as well. So the next thing you do, that big sigma right there, that just means you're gonna sum these things up. So now you're gonna add the 100, the 100, the zero, and the zero, and you get 200. 
Now, since you took four measurements, you're going to divide by four. That's the N in the formula. So we're going to divide by our four measurements. 100 plus 100 is 200. Divide that by four and you get 50. So what we have now is an average that didn't get washed out by the fact that we have a negative 10 and a positive 10 offsetting each other. But that number is kind of a nonsense number. You can't get 50 volts when your peak was positive 10 volts. So what we have to do is we have to scale that down. So we take the square root of 50 in order to scale it back down to a reasonable number and we get 7.071 volts. So this waveform right here is putting out the equivalent of 7.071 DC volts. In fact, that brings us to a convenient shortcut. In order to calculate RMS voltage, it turns out that all you have to do is find the peak voltage and multiply the peak voltage by 0.7071. So if you multiply our 10 volt peak by 0.7071, you get 7.071. The answer we got after we did all the complicated math. It's kind of cool how it falls out and it turns out to be something really simple. And hey, if you're finding this information useful, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more DIY audio content. Hang on a second, we don't measure amplify power in volts, we measure it in watts. So we need to convert this to watts using Ohm's law. Right here's the formula. We're just gonna square the voltage and divide it by our resistance. And that's gonna give us 12.5 watts of continuous power. And hey, let me show you something cool. You may have heard that peak power is double your RMS power. Remember we had 10 volts on this waveform. So 10 squared is 100 and 100 divided by our four ohms is 25, which is exactly double of the 12.5 that we just got. Now, if you wanna know how to use an oscilloscope to set your gains, click on this video right here. I'll show you how. And if you don't have an oscilloscope, you can do the same thing with a multimeter. Click on this playlist right here and I'll show you how to set up an amplifier using nothing but a digital multimeter. And if you'll hit this subscribe button, I'll see you on the next adventure.